Welcome to Endno 20 for thesis and publications writing. In this session, we will look at some of the more advanced features and functions that can aid you in the writing of your thesis or publication. We will be looking at the importance of backing up your library, the best way to use cloud storage, how you can tidy up your library to ensure the right information is included in your in-text references and reference lists, how you can edit a citation style, how you can use a journal's term list to deal with full and abbreviated journal names, how you can combine different libraries, the best way to merge chapters into a single document, how you can set up chapter reference lists, working with track changes, and the best methods of recovering your library if the worst happens. In the newer versions of EndNote, which are Windows X9.3.3, and Mac X9.3.2 and above, libraries that are created in these versions will not work in older versions of EndNote. You are able to share references from a newer version with an older version via EndNote online. When you open a library from an earlier version in these later versions, they will be converted. Please note that this cannot be reversed. However, EndNote should retain the original version. But before doing any upgrading, always create a backup of your library so you have something to go back to if the worst happens. You are able to check for EndNote 20 updates from within EndNote. In Windows, if you go into the Help menu, you can access the Check for Updates option there. In a Mac, it's under the EndNote 20 option in the top left-hand corner of the screen. Our session is looking at EndNote in the Windows version, but we will be pointing out where there are differences on the Mac. Backing up your library is one of the most important steps when using EndNote. We recommend to always have at least three copies in three locations. It is not enough to back up to just different folders on the same device. Some suggested backup locations include university servers, a web email account that is not associated with anything else such as social media, but please remember that some web email accounts have limits on the attachment files and this may not be useful if you have a large library. When creating your backup, your file name should include the word backup. Be descriptive but not too long and not contain any spaces. It is also worthwhile to add the date backup was created. Remember to backup regularly. A backup is no good if it's six months old. We recommend weekly, but more regularly may suit you better. Just consider how much time and effort it has taken you to compile your EndNote library. It is part of your research. And think about how much stress and difficulty it would cause if you had to rebuild all of that. Remember that your backup is the copy that you don't touch unless needed. It should never become your working library. Cloud storage can unfortunately cause issues when working with EndNote. If you open and run your EndNote library from the cloud, it can cause issues such as corruptions, looping of when trying to import references and other issues. What we recommend if you have something, your EndNote library on the cloud, is to always download and save it to your local device to work on it. When finished, you can add the saved and updated version back to your cloud space. The best methods for cloud are for using it to store your backup, or if you need to access your library from different locations, or if it's too large to transfer easily. We will now start looking at some of the more advanced functions in EndNote. Firstly, we're going to have a look at some of the preferences in EndNote that you may find useful. These preferences will affect all libraries that you use. In Windows, it's available through the Edit menu. If you are using a Mac, it's under the EndNote 20 menu. There are a range of preferences that you can set. We are going to look at a few of them. The first one is the display fields. This is referring to the information listed 
in the column headings in the middle pane. These can also be changed by right-clicking on the column heading. The change we suggest is to add the record number. The record number is how EndNote identifies the references in Word. It is a unique number each reference is at given, including duplicates. It is quite a basic numbering method. Essentially, the first record you add or reference you add will be number one, and then subsequently one, two, three, etc. Knowing the record number can help identify references and also help with troubleshooting. The next one that can be useful is how EndNote opens libraries when you first open EndNote the program. You can choose to do nothing or for it to prompt. Otherwise, if you have the default setting of open the most recently used, you can accidentally open and add references to the wrong library. I'm going to leave it as do nothing. The third one to have a look at is the PDF handling. In here, you could change how the PDF are named when they're saved into your EndNote library. The other useful feature is you can set up an automated import folder for PDFs. So every time you add a PDF to this folder, when you next open EndNote, it will scan this folder and try to import any new PDFs. Remember that EndNote cannot import all PDFs. Sometimes they may just come in and leave the reference information blank. To add those preferences, just click on Apply and then click on OK. The next thing we are going to have a look at is how you can tidy up your library to ensure the correct information is included in your references and reference list. Some of the common things to look out for are author names and how they've been added. So if you select a reference and go into the edit option, just ensure that each author is on its own line. If you do know the full first name, that is useful to add as it helps EndNote differentiate between authors who are different people but have the same name and first initial. The other thing to check is that group authors, such as institutions, company names, government departments, have a comma at the end of them. Without this comma, EndNote will treat a group author as a person's name. So for example, the University of Queensland may come out as the u.o.q rather than the University of Queensland. Other things that you can check in here is the capitalization, the way journal names have been entered. You may need to change the title capitalization. For example, if you're using APA, the title should be in sentence case, which is what we are seeing here. When you have double checked and ensured the information is correct, the next step is to remove any duplicate records. This is because duplicate records can cause issues if you use the same reference, but different entries of it. So for example, these here are the same reference, but they have different record numbers. So when I use both 19 and 21 in my Word document, that may cause some issues with the style. The style is actually doing the correct thing, but because it's the same author, the information looks incorrect. You can use a tool within EndNote called Find Duplicates to remove any duplicate records. If we go into the library menu and then into Find Duplicates, and what EndNote will do is bring up the duplicate records side by side and highlight where the differences are. And you can move down or scroll down to see where those differences are. You can then either edit if needs be, if there is something, this one on the um, right here, it's got the full name, which I like. Let's use the full journal name, which I also like but it doesn't have the full page numbers, which it does on the left. What I can do is add that information because it's only a small amount. 
and then you can say I want to keep this record and it will then scroll through until you have gone through all the duplicates. If you have more than two duplicates it will bring up each one until you've gone through them all. So you can go through one by one. You can also skip any that you would like to look investigate further or there aren't actually duplicate records. You can also cancel out of this and as you can see we have a temporary group that's appeared where all of the duplicates are highlighted. Basically EndNote just chooses the higher of the record numbers. If you wish instead of going through them one by one you can bulk delete it by dragging and dropping the highlighted references. Also I would double check here because maybe it is selected one you don't wish. For example, number 21 has the attachment, whereas 19 doesn't. So I'm just going to switch that by using my control key in Windows or your command key in Mac. And then you can drag and drop that into trash. If you accidentally add something to trash, you can move it back to the library. EndNote does remove most duplicates, but it can miss some. So it's also advisable to sort your library by title by just clicking on the word title and having a quick scan yourself. Also remember to regularly do the find duplicates while you are still adding references to your library. And it should be the final step before you start writing to ensure you have no duplicates. So those are some ways you can tidy up the library to ensure your information is as correct as possible. The next thing we are going to have a look at is how you can edit a referencing style. EndNote comes with hundreds of styles. You are also able to add styles by downloading them either from the University of Queensland Library website or from the EndNote website. You can access these extra referencing styles from EndNote by going into Help, and then to output styles. And this will take you to those styles on the EndNote website. So before you edit or attempt to write a style, just check that there hasn't been one already created. You can download styles by clicking on the download option and saving it to your device and then you can open that style by clicking on it and then go file, save as and save the file style into your library. To edit a style You either need to have the style currently selected or if you come into Edit Tools, Output Styles and if it is a currently selected one you can edit from there. If not you can either select it or go into the Open Style Manager option. Find the style there that you would like to edit and click on edit. This will open the style template in a separate window. Before you do any editing of a style, you must save a copy. Don't ever overwrite an existing style because if you need to, you can get rid of the copy and start from the beginning and you will always retain the original. So if we come up to File, Save As, and save it under a relevant name. Once it is saved, we can then start editing our style. Basically with editing a style, there are options listed on the left hand side. There's some up the top which are global 
And then there's areas that apply to specific types or parts of the reference in style. So we've got a section for the citations or in-text references, a section for the bibliography or reference list, and there are also options for your footnotes and figures and tables. Essentially, editing a style involves selecting the area you would like to change. So for example, page numbers, and then you will see the options appear on the right hand side. EndNote will either give you a range of options to select from, or you may need to input some information. So for this one, for example, you could change it so it abbreviates the last page number. In the citations, for example, you might like to change how authors are listed. So you might like to change that between each reference is a comma, but before the last, you might like to include an ampersand or the word end. You can also change things like the first time a reference appears, you may list all the author names, but each time that reference list appears after that, and it has, say, three or more authors, you list the first one and then abbreviate after that with et al. You could also change things like the sort order and how to deal with ambiguous citations. Some options in the bibliography or the reference list. Perhaps you would like to change how the layout appears. So you might like to include a hanging indent and include that for all paragraphs. You might like to end each reference with a space between them, so you include an enter. You might also like to change how the volume information appears. So with the template, this is how each reference type appears, the order of the reference um, field, author, title, etc., and any punctuation. Be very careful how you change information in here. All the punctuation, such as the vertical pipes and the dots and the quotes, have meaning. A basic change you could make is something like in the journal article, you would like the volume number to appear as bold. So if you highlight that field name, and if you come up the top, we can see some basic font formatting options we could bold that. And then any information in the journal article volume field will be bolded. So that's just some of the options available to you. Basically, it's trial and error. Select the area you would like to change. Make your change, then save your style. Go out to your Word document so you can experiment. Select the style you've just created and apply it and see if it does what you would like it to do. If you would like any advice around this, please contact your liaison librarian. Once you have finished, you can just close that window down and we will also close our styles window. So that's how you can edit your referencing style. The next thing we are going to look at is how you can use the journal's term list to work with both full journal names and abbreviated journal names, as different styles will require different formats, and also different databases provide different formats. So rather than you having to edit the reference journal name every time you make some change to the style, EndNote provides journal term lists. These need to be installed in each library that you use. You can do this by coming up to library, the library menu, and come down to open term lists. If you can't see these listed, just ensure that your library is active by selecting a reference, and then click on the journal's term list. When you have an imported a list, EndNote will attempt to create a term list for you as soon as you start adding references. 
However, as we can see in this example, I'll just make this a bit bigger, the information isn't being sent across correctly. The full journal name column has got the abbreviation and the abbreviation has the full name. So delete what is currently there. Now we need to import a list. So click on the list tab. This will work the same on a Mac. Come down to the import list option and then it should go straight to that list folder. If it doesn't, on a Mac it's under Applications, EndNote 20 and Terms folder. There is a limited number of term lists and they are basically discipline based. If you can't find the specific discipline listed, go with the one most closely associated with your topic area. Also note that some lists are much larger than others. For example, the medical one has about 14,000, whereas the law one has about 1,000. That's just the nature of that particular discipline. So once you've selected it, click on open, and as soon as they're inserted, EndNote will give you a message to confirm that. If we now go back to our terms tab, we can now see our term list with the full information. As you can see, there is more. there can be more than one abbreviation. The main difference is abbreviation one generally includes the full stops and abbreviation two does not. So once you've imported that list, you can go out to your Word document, select the style and your journal names should be reflective of that particular referencing style requirement. For example, if we were using APA, it would include the full journal names. If you find some are still not displaying correctly, it's probably because they're not included in the list. Unfortunately, the lists aren't 100%. However, you are able to add to this. And you can do that by coming back into your term list, going to the terms tab and click, clicking on new term. And then you can add the relevant information. You will need to find out what that is. If you are unsure, please contact your librarian. You can also check the da a, data a relevant database, or if you know the term list name, do a search. Also check out the journal website. Remember, abbreviation one will take full stops, abbreviation two will take no full stops. Once you have done that, it should adjust correctly. The only other reason it may not is because the full journal name listed in your reference doesn't match the full journal name in the list. A common one is they will say something like the Journal of Psychological Review when in the list it's actually Psychological Review. So you can either adjust the name in your reference to ensure it matches the journal reference list. If you wish to change how your referencing style treats journal names, you are able to edit this. As we did earlier, if we come out to our output styles under the tools menu and then go into edit or select the style we wish to edit and go into the journal names option up the top and you can see you've got the choice to use the full or one of the abbreviations. Save it into your style and it should then reflect when you go and select it in Word. So that's how you can use journals term list to deal with full journal names and abbreviated journal names, both in your reference and in your referencing style. The next thing we are going to look at is how you can combine different libraries together. Sometimes it might be that a collaborator or a co-worker has sent you a library that you would like to add to your own, or perhaps you would like to, you are starting a new project, or you're moving from an honours or masters into a PhD, you would like to have a new library, but you would like to include references from your original libraries that you used for those previous programs. You can uh, add a library into an existing one, or you can add a library into a new one. I'll show you how you can do it into a new one. First, we will create a new blank library.
Once you have done that, you can then go to File and Import. This will be the same on a Mac and into File. In the Import File option, choose the ENL file of the library you would like to include, not the data folder. And then ensure your import selection says EndNote Library. And remember, if you cannot see these options on your Mac, click on the Options button that should be in the bottom left-hand corner of this window. Then just click on Import. And it will then bring in those references, including the PDFs. If you have an existing library, it will just add them to it, but remember the record numbers will change because you have existing references and it will then start at the next number in the sequence. You are also able to add references from a, or from a group or from a selected number of references to a library. To do this, highlight the references you would like to add or you could go into your group and just select the whole group. And you can either right click or go up to your references menu and use the um, copy references to option where you can either select a new library, choose a library, or if you have the library open simultaneously, you can select it from the list there and it will then just copy those references across. You can also, if you have the window sitting side by side, drag and drop across. So that's how you can combine libraries or references from one library into another. We are now going to start working with Word to look at the best way to merge multiple documents or chapters into a single document. The first thing to do is to open each of your documents that you would like to merge. Then we highly recommend adding them to a new fresh document and not just bringing one, all the others into one of them. This is so that each separate document acts as a bit of a backup for you. So we'll create a new blank document. I'm going to save it at this point. It's not necessary. It can be useful. Once you have done that, you now need to go to each of your chapters, go to your EndNote tools, and what we are going to do is change it to an unformatted citation document. Now what this means is we switch it from the formatting we can see here to an unformatted document where the references just become placeholders with no coding sitting behind them and the reference list itself disappears. The reason for doing that is this is a safe way to move your references around, particularly bulk references, and then to combine them into one document. So go into your EndNote 20 tools into your Convert Citations and Bibliography. This might be in a slightly different location if you're on a Mac. And go to Unformatted Citations, not plain text, Unformatted Citations. And once you do that, you should see your citation turn into this format with the curly brackets and with the first author, last name, year, and the record number, which is what this hash is referring to. And if we have a look, we won't have a reference list either. That's fine, it's all safe. We come back into our second document and repeat those steps. Once you have done that for each of your documents, highlight all of the first document, copy and paste it into your blank document, and then repeat for each document ensuring that it shows in, up in the format that you require. And the order you require, I should say. Okay, so once you have done that for everything, we can now update our document by coming into our Word tools, 
go to update citation to bibliography to switch it back into the formatted version. And as we can see now, our references have come back. And we also have a reference list but it includes references from both or all of the documents. And as mentioned earlier, this is the safest way to do this. So remember, in order for you to be able to do this effectively, each of your chapters must have the references coming from the same library. You can have as many libraries as you like, but they will only ever be, you can only have one Word document associated with it. But for one library, you can have multiple Word documents working with it, particularly if you are combining separate documents into one. And once you have done that, you will now have a final document you can start working on. We will now look at how you can create chapter references lists rather than a combined list at the end. To do this, we work with Word and its section breaks. Unfortunately, section breaks can be used for other purposes, such as if you have different formatting, such as a table or a figure that you would like to set up. If you have set that up and you have references within these different sections, EndNote will create reference lists at each section break point. So this will only work if you don't use section breaks for other purposes. If you are in that situation, you can, there are other options, so please come and talk to your librarian about them. However, to do this, firstly, we need to set up our referencing style to do this. So if we come back into EndNote, and again, we are going to edit our style. So into Tools, Output Styles and Edit. This time we go into the sections option. And from here, you can choose to create a bibliography for each section, or you can create a bibliography for each section and also have a bibliography or reference list at the end. So select the one you want and save it into your style. Remembering to save the style first and then make the change so you're not playing with the original. Once your style is ready to go, come back into your document, place your cursor where you would like the first list of references to appear and using your Word tools, go into layout and into breaks and select section break. It's not a page break we need, it's a section break. Then go to the next part and add the next section break and keep going until you've popped all section breaks required in. Then come back into your EndNote tools and select the referencing style you wish to use. APA comes with a section style for APA 6, so I'm just going to use that one. Update your document and you should now see there's chapter one and the reference list there chapter two, and our reference list there. So that's how you can use EndNote to create chapter reference lists. But remember, this will only work if you haven't used section breaks for other reasons. Next, we are just going to discuss track changes. Unfortunately, track changes and EndNote do not work well together. Basically, the problem is it's a function being applied to the same set of text and then they compete to try and do their functions. So track changes basically freezes EndNote and it will not either format separate uh, correctly or it will format in an odd way. Our best practice recommendation is to not send your EndNote linked document to whomever is using track changes, whether it be your supervisor or editor, but rather convert it to a plain text version and send them the plain text version. The issue with this, of course, is that you cannot use the automated track changes tools to accept changes. 
you would then have to take their changes and comments and apply them to the original. It's not a great option, but it's the best option we can suggest. You could also try having a discussion with your editor or supervisor around using EndNote and track changes. You can create a plain text version by coming, making sure your file is saved, coming into your EndNote tools in Word, going to Convert Citations and Bibliography, and go to Convert Plain Text. What this will do, and it will give you a bit of an explanation, is create an unsaved copy. So if we have a look here, there's my final, and there's an unsaved version of it. And there is no EndNote functionality available. I can then save that. And we strongly suggest adding something to identify it as the plain text version. This is to ensure that you don't accidentally delete the wrong version because the plain text cannot be reversed. It is possible to start adding new references, but it will actually add a second reference list and your original references will not be functional with EndNote. If you have had track changes applied to an EndNote document, the best option is to ensure either that any track changes aren't applied directly to a reference, or if they have been, to accept all changes, delete all comments, and turn the tracking off. Once you have done that, you can try working with EndNote, updating your doc document, for example, and that should unfreeze and allow EndNote to function correctly. The last thing we are going to have a look at are some of the recovery options if the worst happens and your library becomes corrupt. Of course, the best practice is to have a backup that is being backed up regularly so you don't lose too much work. However, EndNote does provide a few options to recover your library. The first one is to go into EndNote itself. Close Close out of your library. Out that you wish to recover. And then come into library and then recover library. It gives you a bit of an explanation of what it's about to do. Select the library you would like to recover. Again, choosing the ENL file. It will then save a copy with the word saved at the end of the file name. You can choose where you would like it to be saved. And then it will attempt to recover it. Now, in some cases, it will not be able to be recovered. In other cases, it may not recover all of your references. But once you have done that and you receive the message, it will let you know what the outcome is. You can then open that library. and start using it. I'd recommend uh, removing the corrupt library either into another folder or deleting it altogether once you have got the recovered library and you've checked it's all working and then change it back to its original file name so it is associated with any Word documents. If that option doesn't work or if you've accidentally deleted your ENL file or moved it around and now can't find it, the first thing to do is if you've still got the data folder but the ENL has disappeared, check your recycle bin or your trash as it may just be there. Also check other locations where you've used your EndNote library. It may have a copy still there. If that is the case, what you can then do is come into where your file library is saved and take the data folder and move it to a separate location. Then come in on Windows into your notepad program. Basically it's just a little um, plain text editor which is under Windows Accessories. For those of you on a Mac, uh, choose your text edit program. 
what we're going to do is create a dummy library that we can use in association with your data folder to attempt a recovery because your data folder does contain reference information as well. So once you're in Notepad, go into File, Save As, go to where you saved that file, And then you need to create a file name that's exactly the same as your data folder, but just without the data at the end. If you're on a notepad, then just put .enl. Don't say it as a text, you need to change the file extension to .enl. For those of you on a Mac, you will first need to save the file, then you will need to go into your finder and go into the um, go option on that particular file and change the file extension. There are steps available on how to do that. Once we have created this dummy file, we just close out of Notepad or Text Edit. And as we can see, we've got our social media ENL file in the same location as our social media file. It has to be, remember, these two must travel together. Then double click on your ENL file. And if it works, you will recover your library. If there's PDFs, they should come back as well. So that's option number two. You can try this if recover library doesn't work or if you've accidentally deleted your ENL file. If you've tried both of those and had no luck, the last option available to you is if you have existing Word documents with EndNote formats, formatted references that you used from that particular library. And that's because your Word document also contains a copy of the reference information in what EndNote refers to as your traveling library. So it must be an EndNote connected document with references from that library. So open that Word document, and you might have multiple Word documents with using different references. So what you can do is rebuild or start rebuilding your library from those Word documents. Once in Word, go to your EndNote tools and then go to the export to EndNote option and then choose export traveling library. And this will be similar on a Mac. It will then ask whether you want to add to an existing library or create a new one. If this is the first document you've used, start a new library. If you have subsequent Word documents, then add it to the existing one that you've created. And depending on the size of the document, it will take a few seconds, it may take a little longer. But when you get the export complete message, and if you go into EndNote, that library will now be open. It will not retrieve PDFs, it will not retrieve group information, but at least you have your basic references and you can start rebuilding from there. So the three options, if you need to recover your library, best option is to have a backup. If you don't have a backup or it's not recent enough, you can try recover library in EndNote. You can try if you have lost your ENL or the recover library doesn't work, you can try using Notepad or text edit to create a dummy option within the same folder making sure that you take the data folder somewhere where the ENL is not also listed. If that doesn't work, you've got the option of exporting the traveling library from references in an existing Word document. 